Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, we revisit episode four, Synchronicity, in which we learn how to build a Blazor server and a Blazor WebAssembly application at the same time, in the same solution, with the same code base. Well, I recorded that episode using Blazor on .NET Core 3, but guess what happened when we tried to use .NET 5? It wasn't pretty. So today I'm simply going to show you a little hack so we can use this excellent technique in .NET 5. And that's all coming up right now, right here on Blaze and Train! So we're going to create a Blazor server project here, and I've got a special folder to hold this project. Blazor server. I'm just going to select the defaults. And there it is. To this, I'm going to add a new project, which will be a Blazor WebAssembly application called Blazor WASM. And just as before, we're going to select this guy, ASP.NET Core Hosted, because we want a server as well as WebAssembly. Now note, I'm using .NET 5. All right. So far, this is exactly what we did before. And the next step, if you recall, is to add a project reference from Blazor Server, the server-side version, to Blazor Wasm client and Blazor Wasm shared. And that shared project has models and things that we need from both client and server. Now we're going to modify the underscore host CSHTML file in the server. And instead of referencing app, which is our local, you know, Blazor components, everything Blazor. We're going to change this to Blazor Wasm client app. Also going to change the render mode to server and go to the solution properties. We're going to select multiple startup projects, the Blazor server app and the Blazor Wasm server app, which hosts the WebAssembly app. So far, this is exactly what we did in synchronicity. However, if I run these things now, it's not even going to build. And here's the error. The static web asset in the client project www root CSS bootstrap bootstrap min has a conflicting web root path. Okay, here's the story. In .NET 5, we have scoped CSS, and so there needs to be a little magic in the component model to handle CSS files, and it turns out all static files. So static files are now part of the Blazor uh, app, if you will. So the solution is to delete all things Razor plus the web root from the Blazor server application so they don't conflict. So here's what it's gonna be, the web root, the data folder, not all of the pages folder, just the Razor files. The shared folder where we have our nav menu and all that. The imports Razor, the app Razor. Yep, just delete them. But we're not quite done because CSS files are referred to in their environment. We just shifted the environment from the Blazor server app where there are no CSS files to the Blazor client app. So let's grab from index.html in the client those two style sheets, the links to those two style sheets, and then overwrite in host from our Blazor server style sheets. So now we're using the right style sheets. Now another problem we're going to have is in startup, we don't have a Blazor server data anymore. And we don't have a weather forecast service anymore. So you can get rid of those. And now we should be able to build. Let's rebuild everything. Rebuild all succeeded. 
Now let's just run it. There you go. Blazor server on the left, Blazor wasm on the right. Now remember the problem that we had with fetch data? Yeah, we still have a problem on the server. Reason is we don't have that HTTP client. So we have to add it. Not only that, but we have to set the base address. And we have we get the base address from the Blazor Wasm server properties launch settings. We're going to use this 44341 port. And I've got a little magic code here. So we're creating a new HTTP client, setting the base address to 44341 localhost. Okay. Now we had to do that. There isn't really any way to find out from a separate Blazor server application where this particular server is that has the API controllers on it. Uh, so you just got to know what that URL is. Now let's try it again. We can fetch data from here and we can fetch data from here. And that's it. Synchronicity 5.0. Back to you in the studio, Carl. So there it is. It wasn't so painful, but the solution is unintuitive at best. And when was the last time you deleted so much code from your app before you even got started? What time is it now? Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Place a train.